Hey, it's Don the Osh Professor. Today we are going to talk about another bolo. Now, I happen to like this one too, the artistic wise of it, but it's circus collectibles. Um, across the board, circus collectibles are a huge, huge market. There's sideshow freaks, sideshows in general, broadsides, posters, signs, artwork in general from all these circuses. Tickets across the board, there's a ton of things in the circus field that do sell. But we're going to go to the screen and we're going to show you just circus bolos right this moment. So today's topic is circus related items. The biggest, most important ones are usually posters, banners, and big flag type uh, items. And this is just a perfect example. Some of these were hand painted so they'll be one of a kinds. Some of them are on canvas. Some of them are on canvas that's been coated like um, tarred or painted in, in a certain aspect of it. So. This is just what you see here. It's this one signed. There's the artist Snap Wyatt. Oddball name, but this is typical of what you would see. This is an interesting one. It looks pretty early. 1950, I guess that's not really that early. But this is $4,599. These are the top end. I've never found anything quite like that before. Paster, paper and cardboard signs are usually what I see. Here's another cloth one. You can see the... Uh, eyelets at the top of it for being mounted. It would have been mounted between poles or something. This one's signed again, Ziegler Tampa. Just an interesting uh, oddball item, typical of what you would see. This one's right about $2,000 there. Again, these are the high end of it. A lot of these are hand painted. They don't have to be early though. They do show up newer versions. This is from the 1970s and from a fairground. Something that, you know, even you or I could have bought at some point. Um, really bizarre looking as well too. Really interesting actually, in my opinion. Uh, this is something you just see hanging up in, uh, you know, like a study or something along that line. Really interesting, I think anyway. This is on cloth, too, it looks like. Yeah, definitely painted like an oil cloth or something along that line. These can be fixed up and touched. I wouldn't mess with but this is almost $1,500 for this one. And this is newer, as, it, as you see, 1970s. Now, here's one that you would think would go for a ton more money, but there's like six or eight of these on eBay right this minute or right this very uh, time in the comps. This one's folded, not in the best condition, but still really scarce, really interesting Houdini-era poster here. So uh, a thousand bucks on that one. Just over, obviously, but still real good price. Now, these go back. Now, broadside is something that would have been posted or tacked on a pole or, you know, outside a building or something. This is advertising like a circus equestrian thing. Rather interesting. It's early. It went for $1,250. There's no uh, wording on it either, which is rather interesting. I don't think there was any. Let's slide down here and see if it has any wording on it. Nope, I don't see that, anything like that. And this is a fold piece, so it would fold. There's a chance something like this came out of a book, but I doubt it just because all the way around it you can see rough edges, which is usually the giveaway. Now, anything that you could find in most regular day activities, circuses put out, and they put them out obviously to make money. So anything they could market or you know put out there is what they did. And you know, pictures and things like that were sold at events just like they are modern days. This one's not even a bona fide piece, but the girl has bushy sideburns. Uh, it looks like it could be probably something along that line. Just not something you'd usually see. 17 bids, $855. This is something you might have just found in an album you purchased at an auction for 20 bucks. honestly. That's usually where I find the circus-type images. Now, I've got bunches of images in here just because I run across images of circus e events and people more so than anything else. I do have posters. I got a nice stack of cardboard posters and signs from um, quite a few different circuses from the 50s and so and 60s, which I might show in a haul here too. That's actually what led me to throwing this video together here. Now, cycling was a big event. They would show up at circuses and things like that too, fairs. There was family events that did it as well. There was actually a walking uh, sport. Pedestrians were a sport. That's literally what it was called. And, you know, who walked the most. And it was literally a, a tracked sport, believe it or not. But cycling in general were huge back then. And this is specifics. This one, yeah, it has some information on the back too. These look like they're European from what I see here. Uh, but anyway, 760 bucks. These were U.S. sales, so it's something that shows up over here. They're just European performers. Here's another one dressed as a daredevil. And he did daredevil stunts 
on this this bike here. Now I've heard of this one before. This is early, like 1890s or so, I, if I'm not mistaken. And he like run up on sides of things and you know went really fast around in circle on like a drum or drone kind of thing that moved and rotated. Rather interesting thing actually. Uh, but 750 on that one. Here's just a uh, modern day snapshots, just 50s, 60s. Well, actually, these are a little older by looking at the car. So I'd say 20s on these, but they're actually the circus uh, wagons. Rather interesting, rather nice looking, actually. And it's a very large collection of the trains, the the whole works. Actually, this is really a nice one. This is a very interesting the entrance to it with the posters. This one photo would have been worth some bucks right here, all on its own. Sideshow entrance. Oh, that's some really nice photos. Actually, this is probably one of the best circus photo lots I have seen. Somebody really spent some time showing these. This is literally how they traveled at one time before uh, railroad travel. They'd carry these things from town to town, and sometimes a caravan of circus equipment would take, you know, a mile or two worth of space to transport. So, yeah, you can see here Clyde Beatty's. I have some poster, actually, modern-day ones from the 50s or so from the same circus. There's many different circuses uh, around. So, anyway, let's move on here. This one, 650 bucks. It was a buy it now, and it must have sold immediately. Rather interesting to me. Another circus poster. This photo's terrible. You can see the fold lines. It looks like a legit poster. 990 bucks. The posters show up occasionally. I've had a few in my day. Not many, and they're very few and far between. The odder the subject like this, the scarcer they are. But there are reproductions in almost every one of the uh, Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey circus posters. So almost every one has some sort of reprint. Whether they're a legit reprint or a forgery in general, they're out there. 628 with several bids. That one's iffy. I couldn't really tell. I usually stick to photos and CDVs because I can pin them down and they're real easy to authenticate. So anyway, here's just a couple more sideshow uh, performers. Albino Girl. Uh, these are typical ones. You'll see there's the giant. There's always a giant and the fat man. No offense to anybody. That's literally the title they would title them. But there'd be, you know, the bearded lady and the wolf boy, wolf man and things like that. So that's just typical. It doesn't have to say that on the image to be that person or be one of these performers. They usually printed these and then they would charge you to sign them a nickel a quarter whatever the case may be back then at these these fairs festivals circuses and sideshow events four pod i've had many items from these including some cards i've sold for six hundred dollars or better myself so and this is a newer one too 600 bucks basically on this one it's framed and all it, you can see some fold marks uh, i don't know if that's good or bad on this one but it looks legit you can see some creasing and such forth uh, they obviously framed it. That's not an original frame, obviously. So, hairline tear at bottom, unfaded. Yeah, that's a nice poster, as long as that's when it's from. Another sideshow performer. There was flame eaters and all just, you, you name it, they, they did it. If it meant money, tattooed. Yeah, this one's tattooed. Yeah, you can see them now. I didn't wasn't paying enough attention but you can see tattooed tattooed images always sell there's a huge and i do mean huge market for tattooed images in many different categories too so it's just something you will see here's a handwritten letter signed by pt barnum 1890 that's a little cheap this was a buy it now 575 again i would have to have had that authenticated that specific piece because i could have probably got two or three times that at a better auction or showing the cert on it so that's just what i would have done at some of the higher prices i don't usually do it on most items but something like pt barnum i would have i really feel that would have been a higher uh, sale had it been uh here's another one these are conjoined twins they were circus performers i've had the trade card on the bottom uh, it goes for a couple of hundred bucks, and then you see the actual CDVs on the top. The CDVs are very rare. I don't think I've ever seen the set like this. I've seen one CDV of the pers the, the group on the right, but I have not seen uh, the actual um, individual person on the left. So anyway, it's a nice little lot, 775 bucks. Interesting, somebody's put it together in a frame in the whole works. Uh, they've obviously framed it so you can see both sides too. So rather interesting performers there.
another poster. Cole Brothers is one that I've got albums from right this minute. They do show up. There's some Cole Brothers Circus booklets from the 40s and 50s that have some nice Coke ads in them. Those booklets usually bring 20 or 30 bucks minimum. So, you know, there's stuff to find, not just this way, but anything tied to any of these circuses sells. This is a smaller piece, more like a lobby card or a window card, something along that size, 18 by 20s and somewhere in that range. Here's a glass plate slide. Again, anything you can imagine, 35 millimeter film, slides, photos of every kind, daguerreos, ambrotypes, tin types, CDVs, cabinet cards, postcards, 8 by 10 whatever you can think of that's printed or otherwise, even produced like glasses, stuffed animals, stiff, uh clown people, and things like that. Just across the board, they've made a ton of them. Here you can see the glass plate slide. Rather interesting. $595. It's the Tattooed Lady. Now, she's someone known, so if you really looked into it and typed in a Tattooed Lady, you would find out it's Annie Howard. She's well known, honestly. Bertram Mills Circus Olympia, another just company in, you know, that did circuses as well. Yeah, this one looks pretty legit. Uh, original Stone Litho. It's a fine quality, actually. 500 bucks. Buy it now. I, I don't know on reproductions on this particular one, but I know a lot of them have them, so I'm always cautious. Even paper mache items like this, this is just some circus game. This is probably from a small fair or festival, honestly. The the well-to-do circuses, the big ones, would have had more industrial made items that would have been, you know, stood up better than, you know, something like this. But basically it's the same thing. The ball would go through and fall in one of the holes, and that's where you determine your money. Basically the same type of item. That one was almost five. Uh, some more poster items. These are 30s. These are going up, and you can see the condition. It's got a ton of wrinkles and rips, tears, pieces. It still went for 795 bucks. So don't be scared off if you see you know conditions such as this on these. So anyway, I don't always worry about condition on everything. If it's rare enough, the condition not irrelevant, but it's not as important. I wouldn't have repaired something like that. That would have went out the way it is. Now, Jojo, the Russian dog face. Now, this is one that's known to... Um, this one you might have also seen called Jojo the Circus Monkey. They, they use that terminology, too. Uh, the circus sideshow performers were a touchy subject. A lot of them had a good time. I, I know that sounds strange, but their normal life wasn't so great because people gawked at them and, you know, made fun of them and things like that. So they had a rough life either way you go. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say. Some people enjoyed it and had a good career out of it. Even modern day ones still do this same type of thing. So there's Siamese twins. They're still around that still do do some performances and some, you know, appearances. So it's not like a strange thing. The names always bugged me, but you know, they sign on to it, you know, if that's what you got, you know. Um, this is a touchy subject on the titles, so, you know, just be cautious and courteous and, and respectful on some of these. They just used the title on this one, though, unfortunately. They, they used terms. The, the person was paid for this, but still. It's a rare disease, basically. So, 545. Another circus mache type item. Who knows what this goes to? It could just go to some outside ornamentation. It was mounted on something. It's rough shape, but still $374. People recreate these and do modern versions of these out of paper mache. So FYI, there's something you can do. Not just vintage circus, but modern circus sells too. Uh, now this one's Tom Mix. He was a radio personality. I believe he had many movies as well too to his name. And they ran circuses, just, you know, performers and such forth. Lots of people had circuses. So this one's 349 just for a 20 by 12 photo. It's a large photo though. Books by him. P.T. Barnum wrote many books. Wild Beasts, Birds, and Reptiles. This is a typical one. It was sold at some of his circuses. It was published, you know, internationally. And it just, you know, intrigued people to want to go see them in person at a circus. He bought Jumbo and brought him over here. It was a sad end to Jumbo if you... He was actually hit by a train and... It, just a bad experience. Just, you know, if you're not unaware, Edison himself used to electrocute elephants to death to show the, the current and things like that. It was just a bad experience with some of the things they did with animals and things in the back in the day. But anyway, we've got a long history of that, unfortunately. So anyway, I'm a big wildlife buff, so you know that the whole story bothered me. I've sold many pieces with Jumbo on it, and I did read the story on it. So anyway, 325, this is an excellent condition, though. I don't think I've ever seen one this nice before. 
letter by Amelia Earhart, actually signed by her on the face. This one I would say is pretty legit. I've actually looked at a couple of hers before. Never bought them. I never shelled out as much money as it would have taken to grab one. I'm glad I didn't in some aspects. This one went for three. But if you sent this one in and had it certed, this one could have been fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars possibly on the right day. It, chances are legit, but who knows on this one here. The Elvis ones that I've showed in the past, I can pretty much say uh, I feel are legit, having some certified myself. So anyway, this one looks pretty good to me, but $300. It, this one fits into the field because they had air circuses, and they would have ground performers as well as airplanes at some of these fairs, festivals, and events as well too. So it's just something you'll see. There's um, some PBS history and documentaries on some of these circuses and sideshows and things that are very interesting. I would recommend watching them if you're into that. Half of them are on YouTube, I would gather, from the ones we've seen. Here's another early copper plate engraving. This one, I believe, was a conjurer, a magician, basically, of the day. Circa 1805. It's a steel plate engraving. I'm surprised it only went for three. This is one of those things that if you list it and you list it cheap, you may get one buyer and he buys it, or it could sit there for a long time. The same person might have bought the same item at 300 or at 700 or at 1,000. It's hard to say. That's why I say if there's only one or two sales, that means nothing on the price of anything, unless it's a well-known piece or something or a price guide. This is different. This is something that maybe no other one of this has shown up You know, in the history of the Internet. There's probably some still out there, but most people wouldn't even know what this is. So anyway, 300 Another poster. The prices do go down, as you see. Condition, the the desirability, and the rarity. Now, some of these that weren't like sideshows, that were just animals and things like that. That are, are, are... so posters like this that are semi-common don't go for as much. This one's four fifty. So it just depends on the actual poster. Some were mass produced in, in larger quantity because they were cheaper and you know they were more wanted. The this the animals such as this. So anyway, four hundred fifty, as I said. Here's a pair. This is the Tattooed Lady. Uh, another one. There's many of them. They all obviously have their own individual names and touring history and such forth. That's pretty interesting. The Last Supper on her back. I'm sure that was a big selling point. Come see the Last Supper tattoo. Uh, because they did things like that. And some performers would do them because they already had tattoos. They were into it in the, in the beginning. Why not put some big extravagant piece on there? One single piece. $300. These are postcards. So... Just keep that in mind that these kind of things do show up. And if you're not paying attention, like if you just saw this at a quick glance, you might not even realize that's a tattoo on her. So anyway, that was two ninety six. dollars Now this person has 10 of these, 10 bunches. He must have bought a huge lot of these auction or something along that line. Uh, Thursday, April 30, 1935, it looks like. That's a pretty good assortment there. They've sold only one, though, which I'm surprised. So apparently these aren't super scarce, or there's a mistake in their listing. I'm not sure which. I would think it would be odd to have 10 lots of, or more than 10 of the exact same magazines. So maybe it's a mistake. I'm not really sure. Let's go down and take a look, because this one puzzles me. Uh, years include, then maybe they just have, are available, just no space here. Okay, so it's just a random mixed group like that so anyway 350 for these and i got one more here again there's tons of different items you can find circus stuff all over you're going to have to look and pay a little more attention because it's not always immediately um known that that, that the piece you might be looking at is circus related whether it's a postcard or an image or a flyer or a magazine uh, most of the time it is but there's many items like the early cdvs that we find all the time all the time for us is a couple times a month, so just FYI. So that we find that are worth some money that are circus-related. Some items, again, may not technically be circus-related, but you can market them as that because cir circus collectors will want them as well. Here's just another uh, Siamese twin, um, conjoined twin group. Now, these are pretty popular, these two girls. They started off when they were young, and they actually were performers. They sung and danced and things like that together, believe it or not. Um, you know, a, a very interesting story. So look it up if you're interested, the Hilton Conjoined Twins. Um, I do look up stuff like this, so for future references, these are official. These, they've got some information on the back and, you know, the whole works. There's a photographic studio that you can probably tie these down to bona fide that they're legit. $256. But again, circus items do sell, so I look for them all the time. 
I just keep showing you these because there's so many different things to look for. You know, people have asked, aren't you worried about, um, you know, losing, you know, the ability to find things? There is so much more out there. I haven't, I've just barely touched the surface of what we look for. So I could go, you know, a year maybe showing you something every day of the week like this and not really run out. Just because there's that many different types of items that we look for. Some run across the same categories, some are similar, some can sell in many categories. So I might touch on similar items, but they're all related to a different category. And again, as I talked about before, everything I talk about are, are items that I have personally dealt with myself. I have sold things. I've sold, you know, items of conjoined twins. I've sold items of, you know, um, circus sideshow characters and performers and things in, in the past many times. They always sell, always. I reiterate, they always sell. Postcards or not, whatever they are, if it's vintage enough, it sells. Even 70s and 80s items can sell, but don't just go hog wild. As I said, look up everything. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's some more items that we look for. We do very well on these items. It is one category that I always look for. I've got stacks of signs here now. I've showed items in the halls. I've showed items in videos. I've showed items of circus-related material, even in my What Sold videos. So it's a good area, good items to find. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when we post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.